jealousy of me? It must be in this one. Where can that silly hat have gone to? Understand it. Oh! <laughs> oh! Aha! At last! A hat is very useful, and it also serves as protection. You never know when a dead branch will fall off a tree. Oh. 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 It protects us in snowstorms, even very heavy snowfalls. And afterwards, you can just pat it clean. Sometimes a busy gnome can look like a mouse to an eagle soaring high above. In a case like this, a tall red hat is very important as a signal that this is one of his gnome friends. No, 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 no. <laughs> Better luck next time. Every gnome is given a hat at a very early age. We wear them all our lives, so it's no wonder we have to repair them once in a while. The male gnome's pointed hat is usually red, and it goes well with his beard, which turns white while he is still very young. His jacket is blue, and he always carries a bag of tools hung at his belt. Dark brown trousers and light-colored felt boots complete his wardrobe. In other lands, gnomes sometimes wear wooden shoes or clogs. We gather our wool from fences that sheep have brushed against, and from it we make very carefully tailored clothes. I hope you're interested in all these personal details. I'm a little shy about discussing them, but now you know what the men wear. It's time to talk about real fashion. We females wear a white embroidered blouse and a long brown skirt that goes right down to our ankles. We always wear stockings, even in the summer. Our stylish shoes and slippers are made from felt or soft birch bark. Before marriage, we wear a green hat with braids outside. <laughs> After we're married, we tuck our braids inside the hat. A married woman's hat is a darker shade of green. We dress like this in these colors, so we'll be recognized immediately by all the creatures of the forest who are hunting for food, and by human hunters, too. Our skin is clear, our cheeks are rosy, our noses are large and tend to lift up at the end. Our eyes are usually dark brown or black. And we're a jolly bunch. We have a lot of wrinkles because we laugh so much. Hellos and goodbyes. <laughs> Happiness and affection we express by rubbing Hello. noses. Goodbye. We gnomes, like the animals, have very sensitive noses. With our sense of smell, we can follow the track of an animal and tell you what kind of animal it was and how long ago he went by. There, it's finished. <laughs> this blouse is for my little granddaughter, Susan. We'll be going to see her next month. At least, that's what we're planning to do. But of course, it depends on how busy David is. Ah, I'm waiting for him to come home. He should be here any moment now. Yes, he's gone to solve a problem, one that's as old as the hills. It's been happening every spring for thousands and thousands of years. You might say it begins as a misunderstanding and ends up as a fight. stags are exhausted from fighting and locked together that way they can't get food and they could starve to death uh -huh. there they are Oh, oh, 
dear, oh dear, what a pretty mess you got yourselves into. What are you trying to do? Have you put your heads together to solve the world's problems? Hmm? Did you think perhaps the two heads are better than one? Well, you're not very bright. It seems to me I had to help you out of this same fix last year at this time. You haven't learned your lesson, have you? You two are friends all year round, and then as soon as spring comes, you fight over the same girl. Aren't you ashamed of yourselves fighting like that? <laughs> How would you like it if I just minded my own business and went away and left you two to starve to death here all alone? It would serve you right. <laughs> but no, I have to help you because you're my friends. But do you think I have nothing better to do with my time than worry about you? Do you think I like having to come out here every year and saw you two silly fellows apart? Are you listening? Wait. Before I start, I'll have a smoke. I think I should give you two a little time to think about this. Are you going to mend your ways and stop acting so silly every spring? I suppose not. You've really got yourselves tangled up this time. Very. Yes. Oh, here. If that's the way you're going to behave, I'll just leave you boneheads alone. <laughs> Come on, Swift. We're going to leave. <laughs> that's better. Will you promise to be friends? In that case, I'll continue. You stags are fortunate that these antlers have no feeling in them. There you go. <laughs> You two will be friends from now on. Before I go, I want you to show me there's no hard feeling. Well, what are you waiting for? Show me your fighting is over. <laughs> ah, good. Now don't start that argument again. Bye. I think you'll be all right now. Goodbye, dear friends. I'm glad I could help you. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, just wait and see, Swift. It'll be the same old story next year at this time. But come on, we better be getting home. <laughs> You know, we have to help our friends when we can, Swift. My grandfather used to say these gentle creatures have a life of their own. If you can't make it better, then leave them alone. If only humans could see how happy the animals are when there's nothing to fear and they can play merrily together.
forest safe, the paths are free, the birds are singing just for me, and I'm as happy as I can be. La pa pum pa pa da, yatta to pum pa dum pa da, yum pa dum la pa pa, yatta to tum pa ti. It's such a glorious day. Over there, somewhere, a baby is crying. Quickly, Swift. We're getting closer. Some poor child is in trouble. A baby troll in the middle of the river. How did he ever get out there? Rescue that child, Swift. We've got to save him, and I don't know how to do it. Don't cry, little one. I'll save you somehow, I promise. Hang on tight so you won't slip off. I've got it, but I'll have to have help. I'll call Byron. Well, we'll just have to wait till he gets here, because I can't carry that big troll baby by myself. He's 20 times my size. But we have to rescue him, even if trolls are our enemies. David! Hey, Byron, thank you for coming so quickly. It's good to see you. It's been a long time, old friend. <laughs> Too long, David. Oh, Byron, I called you because I need your help. Yes, what can I do, huh? Look over there on the rock in the middle of the river. Oh, I understand. If we don't get him off, he's a goner. That's right. We'll try to get a rope across from a tree on this bank to one on the other side. Have you figured out how we can do it? Yes, I've got it all worked out. Now, first, I'm going to ask you to climb this tree and tie one end of the rope to a branch. Then Swift and I will carry the other end of the rope over to the other side. All right? Come Just on, Byron. Upsy daisy. Uh, 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 uh. Be sure you make a good knot now. Of course. I'm good at this. That's it. And now, Swift, your job is to carry me across the river. This will be ready to rescue the child, right? <laughs> and now, Swift, take me out there to that rock. <laughs> oh, hello there, little one. Goodness sake, stop that wailing. A little quiet, please. Be still. I'm not going to do you any harm. Swift, please bring Byron here to help me. What do we do now? How to wrap the cord around his waist two or three times. Wow, I wonder what that prevents.